Hello everyone, today I will be analyzing one of the games I played entitled Tuesday. A very strong tournament, Magnus plays, Hikaru plays, all these top players play. And I will be analyzing in specific, specifically, sorry, the game I played against David Howell, one of the strongest, if not the strongest, English Grandmaster. World number 35, 2700 rating, absolutely crazy. So first things first. Um, before the game I was a little bit sad because I was not having the best tournament. I had 5 points out of 10 and this is the 11th and last round. I almost I almost quit but I thought well okay let's just finish the tournament and I was very lucky to get David Howell which is an amazing pairing and I, I, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to play against him. Um, and you can actually look at my reaction in one of the clips. I already uploaded a video. If you haven't seen it, I'm going to link it somewhere over there. If not, in the description. And yeah. With the white pieces, we have David over here. David Howell. And David Maycock with the black pieces, who is me. David Howell played e4. Occupying the center. e5. Bishop c4. This is very likely to be an, a, a bishop. This is called the bishop opening. Um, it could transpose into an Italian after something like knight c6, knight f3, sorry, not f3, knight f3, bishop c5. But very likely that after knight c6, white will play knight, knight c3, knight f6, and something like d3. And this is, it looks like it's going to transpose anyway if white plays knight f3, but that's the, that's the thing. White will probably play f4, which would take us into different territory. So I play knight f6. Um, I could have played knight c6, both of them are fine. And in this position, knight c3 was played. Now, believe it or not, in this position, there are already qu quite quite se several... Se um, I mean, there's a big alternative. If white had played d3, this is what we would call... Um, I already said it, but the bishop opening after something like c6, knight f3, d5, bishop b3, a5, knight c3, and bishop b4. I think that's the main line, more or less. And... Um, this is a completely different uh, approach to, to, to the game. So it's pretty magical how in chess you just play one one alternative and everything changes. So this could have happened. And I thought that David was going to David Howell was going to play that. Okay, I'm not going to say David for myself, of course. So David, I thought David was going to play that. But David played knight c3. And um, I was, I was, I mean, I, I wasn't thinking very well because I was tired. But I just thought, well, at least, at least we're going to get to a line where where I know what I'm more or less doing. This is what we call the Frankenstein Dracula. And in this line, everything gets very crazy very soon. So, for example, in this position, white is already threatening queen takes f7. That's why queen h5 was played. David, what happens if you take the knight first? Like, first things first. Well, if you take the knight, I'm going to play d5. And this is a fork. And I have the center. So, black is already slightly better. Um, that's why queen h5 is the main line. Knight d6 happened. And bishop b3. So in this position, I'm defending and attacking at the same time. That's why knight d6 is the best. Bishop b3, bishop e7. David, why did you not develop this other knight? Well, good question. That's the other main alternative. Oh, this is the, the one big alternative. Knight c6 to defending the pawn is, is very sensible. Although it gets crazy very quickly. So knight b5. What happens if knight takes b5? Of course, queen takes f7, checkmate, I don't want that. Um, main line goes g6, now, uh, queen f3, f5, queen d5. It's pretty funny, actually. This is very dynamic. So now, white is still threatening queen f7 if I take. Yeah. So I have to play queen e7, knight takes e7, king d8, knight takes a8, b6 to, to threaten this knight on, on the corner. d3, bishop b7, h4. Don't, I mean, watch out. If you take this, this is, this is losing your queen. So, um, f4 first, and this is very complicated, very complicated, but yeah, that's one way of, of playing this with knight c6, but bishop e7 is a more solid approach, and it's proved to be pretty good for black as well. Knight f3, knight c6, developing our pieces, and d4. This is a surprise, and this has only been played not many times in the database. This is a very tricky move as well, so David was probably, probably knew that... I didn't know how to approach this, and it's pretty crazy. I do have to find some good moves. This is minus one for black, meaning that black has a big advantage. But um, it's very difficult to play for a human. So 
let's go for the main line first. The main line goes knight takes e5, um, g6, uh, attacking the queen, and you have to take on c6. You can play queen e2, but then it's a little bit difficult to play as white in this position. So you're going to get bishop f6, probably knight f... sorry, bishop f6, queen moves on knight f5, c6, d5. It's pretty good for white, uh, for black, sorry. So takes dc, DC queen f3, castles. When I say dc, I don't mean... yeah, I don't mean the superhero, I, see, I mean... D takes c6. Um, castles, castles, knight f5, and black is very happy. So, knight takes e 5 is not the main idea. I think castles is a little bit more challenging. And after that, I would castle, knight takes e5, knight d4, very important. If I take on, on e5, suddenly I think it's a little bit difficult to, to, to get this bishop out. Knight e8 is very common, by the way. Because I want to get this bishop out. But after something like knight d5, it's a little bit awkward. Because now I have to move my bishop to f6 and then I lose the bishop. I mean, this is fine for black, but there's a better way of continuing and that's um, knight d4. Now this bishop is pretty much going to fall. And if it falls, then um, this bishop was a very big attacking piece. So I'm, it, that's a big succe success. So now I take it and I play knight e8. And this time it's slightly better because d6 is coming with a tempi. This bishop is going to go out, right? The c8 bishop. And the one on e7 is still alive. So there's a couple of lines here, but everything's fine for black. For example, I'm just going to show this one. Knight f6, knight takes e7, queen takes e7. It looks like it's dangerous because black, sorry, black's, oh well, yeah, black's queen is under, under fire. But in reality, there's nowhere you can move this knight where it's a big advantage. Um, that was That was okay for me. But white played d4, and this is where all the fun starts, because it feels like I've seen this idea in some Berlin lines on the Rui Lopez. But in this position, it's even more crazy, because, for example, I don't want to take the pawn, that would be a mistake, or a very, very, very scary mistake, I mean, very mis scary move, sorry. Because after knight d5, I know I've won a pawn, but after something like castles, what am I going to do? In fact... I mean, all my pieces are kind of stuck. I have to get out of, get this bishop out. And white is going to play h4. And all of, all of a sudden, knight g5 is coming. And I'm getting checkmated. So, I have, I, I castled. Very logical move. The best move according to the engine. And the only move that keeps an advantage. There are technically two. But the, the, the best one is g6. David, why is g6 such a strong move? I did consider this, but I didn't think it was so strong. Queen h3 is the only only move. If you go queen h6, I get knight f5 with tempi. So queen h3, e4, attacking the knight. So I get another tempi. So g6, e4, force moves. Knight e5, I take on d4. And do you know what the engine says? The engine is black, black is up a pawn, black is winning. But David, this is more complicated, I know. For instance, it looks like bishop h6 is the best move here. But turns out that after knight takes b3 and knight f5, everything's fine. Which is very difficult to see as a human because, you know, you see a bishop on h6 and you see, okay, I don't, I, I can't castle anymore. Knight f5, I, it's just scary. Like, even, what's my threat here, right? Like, even taking on h6, queen takes h6, h6, I can still, can't still castle. It's very scary. But, of course, the engine protects itself. And after something like this, then black is fine. I mean, black is minus one. And it gets very crazy. It gets something like this. You have to look at all of this. Look at that. I mean... One, two, th three of white pieces are under attack. But this one I can't take. This one, uh, it's all crazy. It's all crazy. So that's that's very scary. That's what I should have played. Um, so if I played against David again, I would play that. If I was black pieces and he repeated the same line, which is 0.0001% likely. Um, we know that. Um, D takes e5. And my plan was to play g6 in this position. Queen h3, knight f5, and claim that at least I've castled and I'm not going to be any victim of opening prep. To which actually I was, in, in some sense, but at least I didn't lose on move 10, right? So at least I'm getting a game against David Howell. David played g4, which is a little bit of a... not the best. Um, the best was bishop h6, and after rook e8, castling, d6, bishop f4. David, why is bishop h6 and bishop f4 the best move? It looks like white could have played bishop f4. This is crazy. Look at this. 
Bishop f4 directly would have been a mistake. It loses the advantage because after d6, castles, knight e3 is there. But David, let's go back to the other line. There was knight e3 in that one as well, right? Well, the difference is that in this position, if I play knight e3, white has bishop takes f7. You see, the main difference about this position, it was the same position, but in one of them, the rook is on f8 because black, white white didn't play bishop h6 and in this one white played bishop h6 first so the rook is on e8 now bishop takes f7 is possible it's amazing it's amazing it looks like white is just wasting a tempo with bishop h6 and bishop f4 but the whole point is that the rook on e8 is misplaced so f7 is a little bit more weak therefore black is in trouble i mean it's amazing bishop f7 if you if you're wondering david you just take the, the, the bishop what is going on well you take the pawn and now i'm losing so uh, amazing stuff, of course. I don't know if David Howell did. Sorry, I'm gonna stop saying his full name. I don't know if David did, uh, had seen this line or anything, but I mean, very crazy things. G4 was played. Very okay move. It's still pretty good for white. And I play knight fd4, uh, centralizing my knight. Knight takes, knight takes, bishop h6. And in this position, I should. Uh, it's already kind of desperate for black. I should have played d6, sacrificing the exchange, which is not that bad, actually, because in, in this position, the only move that keeps the advantage for white is long side castles but um but after after bishop h6 i played rook e8 i was a little bit scared and this makes things worse unfortunately castles by david howell i take on b3 a takes b3 d6 and originally if you look at the stream clip you're gonna listen to me saying oh i'm fine i'm fine i should be fine um because i was glad that this bishop is finally coming to to life but the problem with this is that after f4 which is what David played and it's the top line. I'm just I mean, where's where's my counterplay? What am I doing? So my plan, I need a plan, right? So my plan normally is maybe trying to trade pieces, um attacking the king or or trying to trade s certain pieces, getting a pawn break. Those are plans, but I I get nothing of that. I don't I don't have any plan. So, I mean, I ha I have bad plans. I have like the a5 plan, which is what I did eventually, but that's not going to work. It seems like it's not going to work. So when you're looking at the position and you think, okay, no, none of my plans look achievable, it means you're in the worst position. And what I do in this position, eventually I realized, well, I'm, I'm probably, I'm probably losing. Um, I started creating threats and chaos over the board. So I'm in the losing side of things. Let's mix things up. And I played a5. I wrote down here, this is a good practical decision, because it's blitz, yeah, I'm in the losing side, we're getting into time trouble, I played a5, I wanted to play bishop e6 or bishop d7, bishop d7 is the engine move, but it doesn't do anything, I mean, I'm just going to roll up and die, um, so I'm, I, before I roll up and die, I decide, well, let's make things a little bit complicated, and I play a5, king b1, prophylaxis, um, yeah, it's an okay move. It's not a mistake. I play a4. David, you're just giving up a pawn for nothing. Well, I'm, I'm opening lines. So this rook is now going to be happy. And guess what? This rook is going to be happy in the file where the king is. So I'm, I'm, I'm very, very... I'm, I'm looking forward to that. B takes a4. I played b5. I don't care about material anymore. If I, if I do slow things, I'm going to lose. So I have to play b5. A takes b5. And actually, in this position, a takes b5 is a mistake. So... From a principal point of view, black is doing the right thing. Black is trying to open lines to attack. So now, after a takes b5, white is saying, look, black, you now have a plan. Which is, of course, bad. You don't want to give your opponent a plan. So a takes b5, a big mistake. Uh, white should have played f5. Because now, my attack is not going anywhere. It looks like I, I successfully opened the a file, but it's not going anywhere. Um, and white is just quicker. For example, if I play b4, knight d5. Uh, what am I doing? I mean, na rook takes a4, uh, f6, uh, yeah, I mean, bishop f8. This is pretty straightforward. So, a takes b5, big mistake. Now I'm back into the game. So it was plus one, now it's zeros. But I made the mistake, I played bishop e6. So I should have played c6. And queen a5 is a big threat, and after something like rook f e rook h e1, sorry, queen a5, there's some crazy lands, lines with king c1. King c1 is the only move, by the way. You can't avoid queen a1 in a in a decent way other than king c1 because queen a1 is mate, right? So David Howell is not going to hang that. King c1, queen 
sorry, not queen a1, d takes e5, you have to take with the rook, and after queen a1, which would, that would be a mistake already, because knight b1, yeah? Um, but there are some lines where white takes on e5 with a pawn, and after queen a1, knight b1 is not good anymore, but because of bishop e6. Now bishop a2 is a, is a kind of a threat, um, rook a2 is kind of a threat, so these bishops, look at these bishops, amazing so they're not only defending the king side they're attacking as well so lines can get pretty crazy if i had played c6 but unfortunately i played bishop e6 thinking that now finally my bishop is out and maybe bishop a2 dreaming of that bishop kind of getting active which didn't happen but something else happened you will see so f5 i walked also into f5 like like a like a patter so i'm just walking into my opponent attacking here i had to find bishop c4 which looks like it's I mean, like, what is that bishop doing there? It's not doing anything. It's not even attacking b5. But it did provoke Howell to play b3. And now, this is a fine move, but now I get chances. I play rook a3. If b a, sorry, b, b c, now this is a pin. This is a weird pin, but it's still a pin. And I can play something like queen a8, threatening. So if white plays something like rook a g1, I play this, that, mate. So... This is the open A file. I told you, the open A file causes trouble. So White has to start playing a little bit precise here. And they failed to do so with King B2. Best would have been, um, not that, F6. Um, and once again, I have nothing. <laughs> so I have no coordination. Like, I'm not in time for Queen A8, for example, because of King B2. And um, yeah, I'm just busted. I, I have nothing. I'm not in time to play d5 and some bishop trick. Uh, it's just lost, and if I go bishop f8, then once again, this queen h6, lolly mate, as Hikaru calls it, I'm busted. So, b3, rook a3, king b2 is giving me chances once again, because now I play d5. So f6 doesn't work anymore, and white has to find something else. And white probably is cursing himself. What is, David is probably saying, where's my mate? Where's, what is happening? I have a pawn on f5. It can go to f6. The dark squares are weak for my opponent, for me. Black pieces. But it's not, there's no mate. And in fact, this is getting complicated. I'm, I'm getting d4. I'm getting queen a8. And we're both getting in time trouble. It's getting a little bit more intense. If you look at the clip, once again, look at the clip. You're going to see that I'm, we're both in time trouble. I have less than 10 seconds. In fact, I've been playing with less than 10 seconds since, like, move... 17 uh he's been playing like with 10 seconds from now i he takes bc it's getting complicated i'll play d4 in this position i wanted to play bishop b4 for a second but then i realized um I, I think it's better to play d4 and then bishop b4 in the future which turned out to be a mistake but watch out so d4 okay move rook d3 was played um bishop d2 turns out to be the best move but it's very complicated so rook d3 i play i should have played queen a8 yeah this would have been very good because now Look, all of a sudden, grand diagonal stuff. Queen takes h1 is a threat. D takes c3 is a threat. I mean, bishop b4 is a threat. I don't know what. Like, everything's a threat. Um, but bishop b4 blunders everywhere. <laughs> I just blunder everywhere. So, I mean, ev my opponent blundered. I blunder. Bishop b4 is a blunder. Knight d5 is now winning the game. So, this would have been killing all my hopes. But David played rook a1, which is a horrible move, respectfully. Because we're respectful, Dave, right? We're respectful here. And then I blunder as well. Horribly. I mean, we're playing horribly. I mean, this is horrible. <laughs> but we're in time trouble, right? So rook takes a1. It turns out that knight d5 is all, uh, once again winning. Because it's hitting my bishop. It's threatening knight f6. Oh, sorry. It's threatening knight f6. I mean, I'm busted. I'm once again busted. If I if I play something like rook a8, then this. And bishop g7. Sorry, wait, what? Is that working? I mean, it probably works. Sorry. I mean, even simpler bishop f8. That's for sure. And, and I mean, if I survive this, then I'm, I'm the mightiest person in the world. So, um, bishop g7 probably doesn't work. I'm not sure, though. It might work, but I, I, just to make it simple, uh, bishop f8 just ends the game immediately. So, so we're bo both blundering around, but he takes the rook. And now it's, I'm back into the game because I played queen a8. Which is a mistake again. <laughs> so I should have played bishop takes e3. And after rook takes, um, takes, then this is a is a winning one. I mean, it's very complicated. I rejected it because white has a thousand pawns. So I decided to give a check. 
And then I blunder again because knight a2 is there. And white is winning now. Because even if I have check, I think David was scared of this, but there's nothing to be scared of. I mean, of course, this would be losing. Probably he saw this line and he said, oh no. But uh, after this, white just plays f takes g6 and e6 and... Uh, what, what am I doing? Like F G G five Queen F Queen E six. I have no checks. I mean I have one, right? But like Yeah, this is pretty scary actually. Or is it? I mean takes takes queen takes e three. I mean I don't know who's getting checkmated. I think I'm getting checkmated first. So why is it winning? Once again after ninety two. But David plays King B two, which is the worst option out of the three. So even knight king b1 would have been better, but king b2 is just losing on the spot. So, in this position, I have like 3 seconds, and I go, no way. There's queen a3. And after king b1, I take on c3. And this is a very common pattern, like, this is basic. Um, I'm not claiming that this is easy, I'm not claiming that this was like, oh yeah, what a pattern. No, no, no. I'm just saying, well, queen a3, bishop takes e3, and I realize, in this moment, I'm gonna win the game. Because there's nothing, I mean, white is all of a sudden losing. I mean, the, the king is just too weak. The king just got into this sequence of moves that lose the game. And after rook takes, pawn takes, bishop c1, queen b4, he resigned. Which was amazing. Now, I, I must admit that from this move, um, b takes c4, that was the first blunder. It was just an avalanche, like it was a snowball of blunder. So d4 is a good move, but rook d3, I blunder with bishop b4 because of knight d5 is winning. But white blunder with rook a1, I blunder with rook takes a1, I should have taken on c3. Um, king takes a1 is another blunder. Uh, they would have played, they should have played knight d5 once again. King takes a1 was a blunder, queen a8 was a blunder, everything's a blunder. And we, I mean, if you look at the clip, okay, well, a good excuse is that we're running out of time. But um, I'm very, I'm just, I mean, it's it was a crazy game. I'm very grateful that I got to play against the mighty, the rock star, uh, as many people call him, uh, David Howell. And um, yeah, very crazy game. I think uh, definitely, um, not sure if it was very good quality, but um, I'm very happy I got to play against him, man. I hope you enjoyed it too. Um, I'm just going to leave the final position here. If you have any questions about this game, please let me know in the comments. Um, if you like this video, please subscribe. I do stream quite often, so if you want to check this kind of moments live for the first time, you, you want to be the first people to see it, so uh, you can join and you can create history with me. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.